Hey, what's up? In this video, we're going to be talking about PFF grades, also known as pro football focus grades, and how they're different from stats and how the grading exactly works. And so I created this for my channel, Husker Central, for Husker fans to understand the, uh, because I love to use pro football focus grading to understand how our offensive line is doing and quarterbacks and all that stuff. But this is also for any of you who are football fans that are just like, how do pro football focus, how do these grades work and how do, and all that jazz? So here we go. Let's go ahead and just dive right in. So pro football focus has gradings. They do not go by stats. What you need to know first and foremost is they look at every single play and then they grade it and it's on a sliding scale. We'll get into that scale in just a second. But every single position has its own grading scale, meaning they grade each position differently. So in this video, I'm going to just use the quarterback position as a framework for you to kind of understand, but they grade the running backs, defensive backs, wide receivers, all the offensive line, defensive line, pass rushers, but they're also going, all right, pass blocking, run blocking. So all those different things have all different types of grading scales. And then that player gets a specific number. And now they, then they take those numbers on that sliding scale, again, we'll see it in just a second, and then they put it into a 0 to 100 like grade, and then that player will then have that for each individual game, then for each year, they will then average those grades together, and that ultimately gets their grade and their standing and their ranking, if you will. So let's go ahead and let's look at that, um, that that's sliding scale. So hopefully you can see this, but it's on a plus two or minus two scale. So what does that mean? It ultimately means this. Every player starts at zero, meaning if they just do their job the way it's meant to be done, then they'll be at a zero. So most plays are going to result in a zero, if you will. That's just kind of your average, I punched in, I did my job play, right? So, But if we're looking at a quarterback, per se, and he has... They, with with a quarterback, they are looking at, um, they're looking at timing, they're looking at precision of throw, they're looking at did they make the right decision. They're not necessarily looking at the outcome of the game or the outcome of the play. Meaning, if he throws an interception, is that interception necessarily on him? Don't know. Did the receiver run the right route? Did he throw it into triple coverage? Like those things go into this, which is why statistics do not always tell the story. So let's go back to this, um, the sliding scale. So if zero is just doing my job, right? And then you go from there and it's like a well-thrown pass. Then it gets a 0.5 increase in that, uh, in that play, right? So if it's a well-thrown pass on time, it's plus five. Now, Let's say it gets a plus two, which is almost entirely like rarely happens. But in this example, they use Eli Manning in the Super Bowl uh, when he threw an insane pass for a touchdown to win the Super Bowl. That would be plus two. Those plays do not happen. Those plays do not happen every play, as you know, right? So plus two being the most outstanding, incredible, oh my gosh, type throw, play, um, all of that stuff, that would be plus two. And then everything else just kind of falls within that plus five increments, right? So then what about negative plays? So then it's a negative play, not necessarily if it results in an interception, okay? It's a negative play if he throws into triple coverage, right? Or his pass was just completely egregious, and out of, like, like not even close. We've seen those plays. Um, and so it, 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 again, goes on that minus 0.5 grading scale. Okay, so with that minus scale, we then go into and we see, all right, an awful throw that should have been intercepted. Not necessarily was intercepted, but should have been intercepted. Then that's going to get you, that's going to get you on that, um, that minus scale. Well, then what about what about if we the completely negative two? Well, in this example, they use 2009 NFC Championship. Uh, the game is in field goal range. Favre throws across his body for an interception. 
So, so you kind of see where it gets like, not just egregious, but it's like, come, what were you doing in that moment? That's where you get to that negative two. So zero gets you at average, right? And then plus two is incredible. Oh my God, what just happened to minus two being what the heck did you just do? So that's how that grading scale kind of works. And they do it on plus five increments. Now you might be asking, well, who does the grading? Well, they have full-time, part-time analysts, but they have about 10% of those analysts are professionals who really look at each and every single thing. So like you have an analyst that kind of puts it together, then they give a grade. And then that goes to um, a, a, another analyst who then oversees if the grading is right. And then they will adjust as, as need be. Now, you may be thinking, well, you're not, they're not in the huddle or they don't know the plays. Well, yeah, there's nuances to the game, but you and I can both watch the game and understand when a player did not do his job. Here's another thing with the quarterback position. Let's go back to that. How many times have you seen a quarterback run into a sack? Not all sacks are created equal, right? So when, when a defensive end or a defensive tackle gets a sack and then they celebrate and you're like, dude, you literally did nothing but put your arms around him. He ran right into you. That defensive tackle or that defensive player isn't necessarily going to grade super high for something that he, that quarterback ran right into him. And then from a negative perspective, that quarterback is going to be um, graded negatively on that play for running into a sack. Whereas the offensive linemen aren't necessarily going to be graded negatively because it wasn't their, they, they didn't do their job wrong right? Maybe they're, they're at a zero, or maybe they were blocking for a very, very long time doing their job precisely the way they're supposed to do. Um, and then coverage downfield quarterback runs into a sack, right? So now you understand you can still watch the game and understand kind of some of those nuances. You don't necessarily have to know the play to know when a quarterback or a running back or somebody blows blows coverage or somebody blows uh, a route or whatever you understand that at this point, there's just a sliding scale and it goes in 0.5 increments and you can judge it based on that. Everything again, from that quarterback perspective, based on timing, precision of throw, uh, decision-making, all of those things go into that and then they grade that. So I hope that helps you with understanding a little bit of that pro football focus grading system. I like it a lot better than just looking at stats. Now, is it perfect? No, you have to, you have to kind of take it, and go, okay, well, I have watched this player play, and I can tell you that they are not they are not a 75. Now, that's another thing you should know. From an 80 is an incredible score. So if we look at if it's college, it's 12 games. If it's pro, it's 16 games. If they have an, uh, an overall grade of an 80 or more, that means they were super consistent doing their job at a high level every play for the entire season. Tristan Wirfs is a great example of a left tackle that grades very high in the in in the eighties um, for pass protection. He's, he is, in my opinion, the best left tackle uh, and right tackle previous seasons in football. Does that mean he doesn't have bad games? No, he does, but he's very consistent, right? Um, so when you look at the grading scales, eighty is incredible. The seventies is like all right, still good. Sixties is like all right, fifty. Eh. and then anything under 50 for sure is not good. If you're at 50, that's not good, right? Um, so I would say 60s. When you're in the 60s, that's kind of your C+. Plus. And then when you're in the 70s, that's a B plus to an A, and then 80s, of course, is A+. Plus. So just think of it kind of like that. And it runs, and when you can see them on a, on a not just a game by game, but full season, then you kind of get an understanding. But when you look at it, it's not just about stats because stats can lie. When we see a quarterback from a completion perspective, you know, Patrick Mahomes throws a beautiful pass, a receiver drops it, not on him. That's on the receiver, right? But in a, from a stat perspective, it may look like Patrick didn't have a great game. But what about? other factors, right? So that's why I like PFF grades and kind of put them above uh, just looking at statistics. So I hope that helps you. If it does, great. Would you like this video? If you love Huskers, would you consider subscribing? Um, but thanks so much for your time. Have a great rest of your day.